Since her introduction in 2009, Poppy Parker has grown to become the sweetheart of an ever-growing legion of fans, who adore her sweet groovy look, and versatility. New York is a two-hour plane ride from the Midwest, but for 1960s teenager Poppy Parker, it might as well be in a different universe. She has traded hanging at the local malt shop, and school dances, for the glamorous life of a teenage fashion model in the Big Apple. Poppy has landed in New York. She nervously takes a seat in her first taxicab. During the long drive into the city, she wonders what life as a teen fashion model will be like. There are so many new things to discover about her newly adopted city. The magic of New York, from its wonderful shopping districts, art galleries, landmarks and parks, to its bohemian downtown, is unparalleled, and Poppy wants to experience it all. Get ready New York, she's arrived. Will the city that never sleeps ever be the same again? Poppy Parker is a 12 and a half inch tall articulated vinyl fashion doll with fully rooted hair. The doll has a custom facial sculpt with a molded eyelash ridge. She has the fashion royalty Nippon Misaki body, with articulated wrists and ankles and removable hands for easy dressing. Poppy Parker and New York City go hand in hand. Ever since her arrival to start her modeling career, Poppy has fallen in love with her new hometown. Whether it's taking in the tourist locations, poetry readings, attending debutante balls, or new modeling assignments around the city, Poppy is becoming New York City sweetheart. Everyone wanted a little Poppy Parker star power on their side, knowing full well that everything the teen idol touched turned into an immediate success. Poppy definitely had the world at her feet. The mod era began as a subculture in London and spread throughout Great Britain and elsewhere, eventually influencing fashions and trends in other countries, and continues today on a smaller scale. Focused on music and fashion, the look has its roots in a small group of stylish London-based young men in the late 1950s who were termed modernists because they listened to modern jazz. Elements of mod include fashion, often tailor-made suits, music, including soul, rhythm and blues, ska, and jazz, and motor scooters usually made by Lambretta or Vespa. By 1965 the mods increasingly gravitated towards pop art and psychedelia. London became synonymous with fashion, music, and pop culture in these years, a period often referred to as swinging London. During this time, mod fashion spread to other countries and became popular in the United States and elsewhere, with mod now viewed less as an isolated subculture, but emblematic of the larger youth culture of the era. This period, portrayed by Alberto Sordi's movie, Thank you very much, and in Michelangelo Antonioni's 1966 film, Blow Up, was typified by pop art, Carnaby Street boutiques, live music, and discotheques. Many associate this era with fashion model twiggy, miniskirts, and bold geometrical patterns on brightly colored clothes. American musicians, in the wake of the British invasion, adopted the look of mod clothes, longer hairstyles, and beetle boots. The exploitation documentary, Mondo Mod, provides a glimpse at Mod's influence on the Sunset Strip and West Hollywood scene of late 1966. Mod increasingly became associated with psychedelic rock and the early hippie movement. Its trappings were reflected on popular American TV shows such as Laugh-In and The Mod Squad. Male mods adopted a smooth, sophisticated look that included tailor-made suits with narrow lapels, wool or cashmere sweaters in crew neck or v-neck, Chelsea boots, loafers, and hairstyles that imitated the look of French, nouvelle vague film actors. A few male mods went against gender norms by using makeup. Mods chose scooters over motorbikes partly because they were a symbol of Italian style, and because their body panels concealed moving parts and made them less likely to stain clothes with oil or road dust. Many female mods dressed androgynously, with short haircuts, men's trousers or shirts, flat shoes, and little makeup, often just pale foundation, brown eyeshadow, white or pale lipstick, and false eyelashes. Miniskirts became progressively shorter between the early and mid-1960s, as female mod fashion became more mainstream, slender models like Jean Shrimpton and Twiggy, began to exemplify the mod look. 
Maverick fashion designers emerged, such as Mary Kwan, who was known for her miniskirt designs. The television program, Ready Steady Go, helped spread awareness of mod fashions to a larger audience. Mod culture continues to influence fashion to this day. While America was conquering space and planting a flag on the moon, Britain was busy inventing the miniskirt. In fact, the 60s were a period of great innovation in the United Kingdom. Mary Quant was one of the fashion leaders of the time. She transformed the way women dressed, with her ethos of bright graphic prints, bold lines, and a sophistication that belied an apparent simplicity of execution. As Quant memorably said, fashion is not frivolous. She caused a design revolution with her energy, flair, and rebellion. She brought this energy to bear on her clothing and packaging. Mary Quant, a powerful role model for women, personified the energy and fun of swinging London. She challenged conventions and popularized the miniskirt, colorful tights, and tailored trousers, igniting a new age of feminism. The miniskirt became a symbol of the era, sparking a new creative scene in London and beyond. Quant's tiny boutique grew into a wholesale brand available in department stores across the UK. Her success soon hit America, where her designs were made for chain stores and mail order companies inspiring young women to rebel against traditional dress worn by their mothers and grandmothers. Poppy Parker is Sabrina Fairchild. Along with other wealthy families of Long Island, the Larrabees have a chauffeur, Fairchild, who has a daughter, Sabrina. She's in love with the Larrabee's youngest son David, and has been for all of her life. Unfortunately, he doesn't know she's alive. Heartbroken, she reluctantly moves to Paris to attend cookery school, where she befriends a wealthy baron, who opens the world to her, and with whom she learns the finer things in life. Upon her return to Long Island, Sabrina, now a sophisticate, is ready to take on both the world and David. Things are about to change for Sabrina more than she could have ever dreamed. Poppy Parker and Barefoot in the Park Based on Neil Simon's 1963 play of the same title, it focuses on newlyweds Corey and Paul Bratter and their adventures living in a minuscule sixth-floor walk-up apartment in a Greenwich Village brownstone. Stuffed shirt Paul is a hard-working young attorney just starting his practice, while spontaneous bride Corey is determined to create a romantic environment in one room, with no heat, a hole in the skylight, and oddball neighbors. The title refers to Paul's becoming drunk, throwing caution to the wind and running barefoot in the park in Washington Square, in response to his wife's repeated complaints about his sober and cautious demeanor. The 1965 New York World's Fair was conceived by a group of the city's businessmen who remembered their childhood experiences at the 1939 New York Fair. The fair held over 140 pavilions and 110 restaurants for 80 nations. Hailing itself as a universal and international exposition, the fair's theme was peace through understanding, symbolized by a 12-story high stainless steel model of the earth called the Unisphere. The fair was a showcase of mid-20th century American culture and technology. It remains a touchstone for many American baby boomers who visited the optimistic exposition as children. It might be viewed as a grand consumer show, covering many products produced in America at the time, for transportation, living, and consumer electronic needs, in a way that would never be repeated at future World's Fairs in North America. This fair gave many attendees their first interaction with computer equipment, in an era when these products were kept in back offices, away from the public. Many of the pavilions were built in the mid-century modern manner, a futurist architectural style influenced by car culture, jet aircraft, and the space age, which were all on display at the fair. By contrast, some of the smaller international pavilions were built in more traditional styles, such as a Chinese temple or a Swiss chalet. Hemlines were just above the knee in 1961, and gradually climbed upward over the next few years. 
By 1966, some designs had the hem at the upper thigh. Stockings with garters were not considered practical with miniskirts, and were replaced with colored tights. The popular acceptance of miniskirts peaked in the swinging London of the 1960s, and has continued to be commonplace, particularly among younger women and teenage girls. Before that time, short skirts were only seen in sport and dance clothing, such as skirts worn by female tennis players, figure skaters, cheerleaders, and dancers. Discover the world of Poppy Parker, Integrity Toy's fastest rising star.